Right then, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stephen Alson, and this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a little bit of time. Um, I think a lot of you, and if you don't, you're about to really know of my admiration for Atletico Madrid's San Liguez. Now, latterly, last couple of weeks, there's started to be some links and some talk that Atletico Madrid, who aren't shy when it comes to selling players, might be looking to offload him at what is an extremely reasonable price there's some talk that he's going to manchester city as a backup there's some talk that he's going to uh, buy munich some talk that he's going to paris saint germain but look at the club he's been linked to he's not being linked with a move to fulham is he he's not being linked with a move uh, on loan to the swedish second division he's been linked with the clubs that are elite because he's an elite player now, I wanted to make this video to sort of explain what I like about him, why I like him, why I think he would be a fit for United. Now, I think one of the biggest things that you can talk about um, when it comes to Sal is that he isn't pigeonholed into any particular position in the mid. He's a midfielder, but he isn't only a number six. He isn't only a number eight. He isn't maybe even only a number 10. Um, he is all action. I think he's the only thing you can talk about him. He's dynamic um, and he has great versatility. And I think that great versatility is the big asset that you get out of him. So you could play him. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily think like this, but I think he, he reminds me in certain ways of how, again, if I said he reminds me of Michael Carrick, people go, well, he doesn't do this like Michael Carrick. There's traits to his game that remind me of what Michael Carrick does and it's that sort of back to front pass into the feet of the striker proper threaded through the eye of a needle sort of direct fastball on the floor that Michael Carrick used to do that Saul does he does that like Michael Carrick that doesn't mean he does everything like Michael Carrick I think he defends the space a little bit like Michael Carrick but I think he's way more dynamic I think he's way more all action I think he dribbles better I think he's uh, better in the air I think there's a ton of other assets to his game which make him a different sort of prospect i think there's a lot of traits in his game certainly that sort of shit a little bit that remind me of under herrera as well and I, I wouldn't call under herrera the same as michael carrick i'm just sort of picking up on a couple of the traits that i see um and that's why i think he could be versatile many people after having roy Keane as that sort of deep line playmaking midfielder the number six the anchorman were losing their mind when we signed Michael Carrick to play the same role, give him the same number, because you don't get anyone who's further away than um, Roy Keane than Michael Carrick. And I think that's what people have to open their eyes to what's possible. There's a million different iterations of what can be a number six in a team. It doesn't have to be Ndidi and Kante. It can be different players. You can have different sort of players that fit uh, in there. And I think what makes Sol so good is... You could play him as a, a single pivot. Now, a lot of people don't think he can. I do, and I might be wrong, but I, I do think he can play there. I certainly think he could play um, in a 4-2-3-1 as one of the deep line playmakers, uh, as one of the deeper midfielders. I also think he could play as a number eight with another number six doing more of the defensive work than he does because he's got that ability to go forward. And this is... This is why it reminds me a lot of Ander Herrera. Ander Herrera, Athletic Bilbao, played as a number 10. Yet you see the man-to-man the -man marking job he did as a pure number 6 on Eden Hazard, and he did it several other times as well. But Ander Herrera was probably the quintessential number 8 when he played at Manchester United. That was what role he fulfilled the most. That's not to say that he can't fulfill all of those sort of three roles, uh, 6, 8, and 10, in a midfield three. And that's what Saul reminds me of. I think he's such an intelligent footballer and so technically gifted that I think he can fulfill all three of those roles. Now, if you're talking about his technique, his, his, his footballing technique and on-the-ball ability make him a good deep-line playmaker for me because he's got the vision, he's got the technical ability, he's got the ability to um, be pressed and move out of it and carry the ball confidently and move it through the thirds up the pitch. That gives you an edge when it comes to being at a counter-attacking side because he's going to get through that line. He's going to initially break the line. He can also break the line with passes. Uh, he's also more than adept at being in a, a slow build-up, someone that gradually moves up the pitch, knocks it side to side. Now, Atletico Madrid don't play like that, so you don't get to see a lot of that in his game at the moment. They, they typically average 
an average amount of possession. For a team that won a league, 51% possession is very low for a team that's done so well and, and done all of that. Now, he's he's able to thrive and provide spark in what is an extremely conservative Diego Simeone team. He's still only 26. I think he's at the perfect sort of time now to move to somewhere like United and go and have a major impact um, on the field. I think he's he's got experience. I think he's got quality. And I think he comes in and does that instant upgrade to your starting eleven that I speak about sometimes that I really want us to do when we're signing players. I don't necessarily want a player to go, well, is he better than what we've got? There's no doubt with Saul. I think he's undoubtedly better than what we've got. I think it'd be interesting to see if he did come into a more attack-minded team like United, how much more out of his game we would get because I think you're seeing a limited version of him in a team that limits itself deliberately to play the way that Simeone wants to play. He is box to box and I think his endurance is top and I think that would be something that United fans would almost make him a cult hero a bit like what Ander was because he's got that sort of real competitive edge which I think would suit both the Premier League and suit what United are looking for in the engine room in the middle of the pitch again it makes him effective in any team that he goes to because every team needs energy and competitiveness and endurance and you know he's got a hell of a wand of a left foot He's also got a little bit of an eye for a goal, even though stats-wise, that fell off a bit this year. He really well and truly does all of it. Now, for me, the narrative that he isn't defensively minded enough, one, he plays in an extremely defensively minded team, so there's not often that requirement to be so defensively minded because the entire team is doing that around you. Um, There's also this narrative that he can't operate maybe in a single pivot um, or even being that deep-lying midfielder the furthest back if you like when he was on loan with Real Vallecano in 2013-14 he actually played at centre half so he isn't alien to defensive responsibilities now statistically declined last year Um, he didn't play week in week out Um, in terms of goals and assists wasn't really there but in terms of his overall stats he was part of a title winning side he was a massive part of that title winning side and I think he is a player that can come through the little bit of a slump that he's had and be fine, especially with a move somewhere else um, in a more attack-minded system. So if we look at his stats then, two goals and one assist last season. Again, you're not really writing home about that too much. 1.7 tackles per game and 0.8 interceptions per game. Puts him roughly in the sort of Matic kind of bracket. So, you know, I don't think people would have issues calling Matic uh, a defensive midfielder. And this is per game, by the way, per 90. So this isn't um, how many he did versus, you know, how little Matic played or how little he played. When you compare him to, say, Fred and McTominay, he's got more tackles by 0.1 than McTominay. Um, less than Fred. Fred had 2.5 tackles per game interceptions he's got less than Fred um and again the interceptions thing could also be a a symptom of the system that he was playing in his pass accuracy is a little bit lower uh, than both Fred and McTominay but I think they benefit from having um a selection of passes which is quite easy and as we've already mentioned Saul is kind of looking for that incisive pass a little bit more and especially in a counter-attack inside those balls that you're going to play are far more often riskier when you're in a more possession-based side, I think his pass completion would be up around about where Matic's is, which is 89.9% if he was playing in this. Um, the interesting one that he completely dominates all the United players on is McTominay's United's best aerial uh, midfielder, uh, and he wins 1.7 aerial duels per game. Matic only 0.9 aerial duels per game, and Fred 0.2 aerial duels per game. Considering where he plays, the league he plays in, the the tendencies for Spanish football, there's not that many aerial balls played over and through for midfield to kind of deal with. Sol's winning two aerial duels per game. He's great in the air, which means that you've got the defensive aspect that that helps at set pieces and you've got the attacking aspect that that helps at set pieces as well. In terms of key passes, he's right in the middle of everybody in terms of United. Uh, 0.6 key passes per game, uh, which is slightly less than Fred. Exactly the same as Matic and higher, uh, sorry, higher than Matic and the same as McTominay. Um, he's 
he's just got a, a better quality to his play. And I think if you play him in a more attack-minded side, as we mentioned, I think you even get a lift out of those particular sort of stats. Now, how could United line up with him in midfield? If we manage to keep hold of Paul Pogba, I think Pogba, um, Saul and Bruno, maybe even Pogba being the deep line midfielder alongside him as a two, um, because obviously one of your deep line midfielders gets that license to kind of shuttle forward a little bit. I think he could do that job. In a lot of games, certainly against the top six and, and maybe away from home um, against some dangerous teams, you probably play him alongside Fred. But I think the the move that United need to make is to even make Fred and McTominay fully squad players and bring in people that are going to eliminate them from the team. Or, depending on how United shake this out, Sol doesn't necessarily need to be the six. If, they're, if they've got their eye on Paul Pogba going, Sol could very comfortably be your number eight to Bruno's 10, and they could still bring in a number six. The versatility of Sal Niguez is that he can play a number of different positions in that midfield, and that sort of versatility gives you many options and many different ways to get a tune out of this midfield side. So for me, it's a no-brainer. The prices that are being talked about for him, you don't get this level of class of player for the sort of prices that are going like this very often. It happens. You usually see someone like Leicester or someone like that picking up these sorts of prices. And I would absolutely love for Manchester United to go for him. There's a couple of options there. He's either the eight or he can be the six. And if you keep Pogba, let him be the six because that's a very high quality midfield. And I think they would defend predominantly by keeping possession. And if you went with another number six, maybe a more combative one, someone like uh, maybe an NDD, potentially someone different, or you could even bring in a, another player that's in a sort of Pogba mold with Camavinga. You can still play him as the six, but there's options and there's versatility with him there. And, and listen, I like his attitude. I like the way he plays the game. I think he's a level up on what we were getting out of Ander Herrera, and he was a cult hero at United. Saul would do the same. I think he's an absolute must-have for United. Will we get him? I don't know, but I can hope. Tips tuned in, make sure to subscribe. Got all sorts coming out. I'm going to be looking at the different centre-backs that United could be interested in a little bit later this week. So make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Laters.